There we go. There we go. What is going on, everybody? Turn this down so you guys can't hear that. And let's see. See if we can get some people in here. As we're in, we are doing a lot. Uh, we are uh, to a long time, so we're here and say we so big better condition. Hey, what is up? As you jump in. Uh, have heard from the channel before you know it's been happening. We're going here. You guys are joining, working up. Uh, so it's not sound. But we're uh, if it gets too bad, we will just cut it loose and uh, see what happens. So, just going to play with it tonight. I'm, I'm up and running on StreamYard and uh, want to just get some people in here, test it out. I'm going to be going live on another channel, Muskrat Adventures, here in a little bit at eight o'clock. So, if you guys follow that channel, make sure that you go over there and uh, check that out, out as well. We'll be talking about some beginner stuff uh, at the expo this weekend. Had a had a lot of people asking a lot of basic questions, and and one uh service is bad. Just got better. Well, hopefully it stays. Hopefully it stays better. Um, constantly keep me. Keep me updated on how things are sounding and how things are looking. Uh, this is one of those things. If you guys know the channel, you know things are going to go wrong. But I don't want to keep you guys waiting too long. I know you guys probably come here for the title uh, of new. Whoa. Oh, good thing I didn't play in the Super Bowl, huh? Uh, new real review. Bumping real review. This is an Akuma. Convector. It is a let me get it in focus there. It is a CV 354D. Uh, you can pick these up at tacklebandit.com. Uh, let's see if I can get that banner up for you guys. There you go. Uh, there's two discount codes on this banner. Uh, one is for catfish clothing and one is for uh, tackle bandit. So make sure you guys, you know, take advantage of that. If you can, let's check out who's in here. Audio and video are excellent now. Thanks, Roger. I appreciate it. Uh, probably just had to knock the dust off everything. You know, everything got a little rusty. It's been so long. Heck, it's been months. It's been months. So what has been going on? Um, let's talk about that for a second. So been going for a while uh, from doing the live stuff. My little girl was in gymnastics. Uh, she got moved up in class. Hooray for Corey and getting moved up in her class. Uh, really proud of her for that. But that opened up uh, Tuesday evenings for me to come and start doing some more. Uh, got some more in it. So it ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> That's what's wrong with it. It ain't got no gas in it. Oh, that is for sure. That is for sure. But so uh, got a StreamYard account. Uh, we're going to try to start doing this regularly again uh, the only difference is instead of being on the water for some tuesday nights we are directly going to be talking about uh tackle um it's tackle tuesday and i want to stick with that if you guys have tackle that you want to uh, talk about hear about drop it in the comments and let me know jason huggins uh scott raider 
Mr. Gadget Fishing, Krill Cat Fishing, Ricky Taylor, Palmetto Cats. Thank you guys all for coming in. Uh, it warms my heart to see you guys in here and supporting. So thank you guys. Uh, but we're talking about bumping reels tonight. It's just, it is cold right now. This is a convector for you guys that just popping in. This is a Kuma convector. Get that down there where you guys can see it there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Creo, thank you very much, buddy. I uh, greatly appreciate that. Gas money. Got to get that gas money. Get this thing filled back up with gas. Ain't that right? Uh, thank you very much. So you guys know how I love, love to bump. It's uh, wintertime now, but on my mind is April and warmer water coming, uh, faster water, and some bumping up some big old blue cats. Uh, field of water, fields of water, fields to water. Uh, thank you for that, buddy. I appreciate that. I, I love coming on here on Tackle Talk Tuesdays and talking with you guys. Just check it in. So, cold water or a uh, Akuma convector. Been using this reel now for uh, about a year and a half. Okay, I picked it up uh, from Tackle Bandit. Uh, make sure you guys are using the code down below. Let me get that in focus. There we go. There we go. It's got a nice line counter on it, nice power handle, and some other features that I like as well. You guys can see that that line counter is super nice, super easy to reset just right there. Real quick, smooth. Uh, everything's smooth on this. Greenwell Catfishing, thanks for joining the show. Ooh, got to get you some of that Diet Pepsi. You know what I'm talking about. That's gas for this body. So what do we? What did we use before? Uh, so before I started using these convectors, I was using the Abu Garcia Revos. I'm a huge, huge, huge Abu Garcia guy. And I love the Revos. One thing I did not like about them was their price. They were extremely, extremely... Uh, high priced a revo toro was about 300 bucks give or take where wherever you bought it whether you got it on sale um, another thing i didn't like about it was the guide here did not go back and forth uh whenever you was letting line out now why would that make it make such a big difference it is specifically because as you're letting line out, you want to be able to feel everything. And that braided line would drag on that and kind of fool you sometimes. You'd think you'd be on bottom, but you wasn't. And it just didn't, it just, you didn't have the sensitivity that you should have had. Yeah. So the convector. It's a small, compact reel. Fits really nice in your hands. It's really comfortable on the rod. It's really comfortable to fight fish with. Um, the As you're reeling it in and out, or as you're letting line out, the guide is moving. So everything's going to stay nice and smooth on your reel. And another big feature is, if you see this little switch right here, if you switch that to the off, it's a it's a normal reel where you push the thumb bar down and you reel and it engages the reel. But if you put this on, as you push down to let line out and let off, it engages itself. So push it down, you let some line out, you let go, it automatically engages. Or if you're push, letting line out and you get a hit, you can automatically let go of that thumb bar and it's going to engage itself and that fish is going to get dragged instead of just being able to spool line. So how is why is that important? Well, for me, you know, that that's, allows me to do more multiple things. Uh, for anybody that's ever ran a boat and tried to bump at the same time, Um, you know how hard it is to hold a remote in one hand or have it around your neck, let line out, engage reel, you know, uh, 
pick up the slack and then go back to it. It's nice to be able to have that thumb bore uh, to let go and engage itself to free yourself up. So let's go back here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, Jason, definitely better than smoking. I'm going to pull that up. Let's see if, see if we can do this. Better than smoking my thumb after missing the handle. Yeah, that's uh, whew. you of all people, you know how that's going to, that's going to leave a mark, buddy. Hope you guys are doing good out there. I want to thank everybody again for joining, uh, for the ones that are just joining. Make sure, make sure you guys are leaving them comments down there. Let me know what's going on. Let me know where you're from. Let me know how you've been this winter. Uh, we just got back from Columbus Fishing Expo this last weekend, and wow, was it awesome. Lots and lots of people, lots of uh, uh, catfishing vendors. It was a, a multi-species, uh, you know, expo, but there was a lot of catfishing there. This is a good point, uh, Mr. Gadget Fishing. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's talking about the Revo and when you cast how the guide doesn't go back and forth as the line's going out. And he talks about it, how it is going to affect your casting uh, because of the angle and the added drag. And that's that's 100% correct. Uh, now, I'm not so much worried about that while bumping um, but if you, if you was to be casting with one, that would make a huge, um, huge deal. Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, Creole, I want to get down that away and drop some baits down in that lower Mississippi. Uh, there were some people beat me, uh, beat me to the punch down there, but I think that's some untapped waters and resources, uh, down that away. Well, Jason, you're on the block tonight, buddy. That right there is a, an absolute direct reason why that self-engaging, that one feature right there can make the world a difference. Uh, you know, once again, we're talking about this convector, Akuma convector, and that is a self-engaging feature now you can switch that on and off if you don't like it uh, there are times that i don't like it so let's go back all right we got uh we got mark pd in the house thank you guys for joining in tonight <laughs> yeah krill we'll have to we will definitely have to talk again buddy i want to I want to pick your brain about areas down there and where to stay and safe places to hang out. Also, let me know in the comments. We've got a couple weeks until the Catfish Conference. Uh, I'll be doing seminars down there on patterning uh, Ohio River patterns. We're we'll mainly talking about flatheads. So hopefully we have a good turnout down there in Louisville uh, or Louisville, however you uh, proper proper way to name it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let me know if you guys are going to be there as well. Let's see if we can talk some specs about this reel. Now this one, this one is brand new in the box. Um, actually an extra one that I bought. So let's go over some of the specs on this. This is a CV. 354D. It's got uh, two plus one bearings, a 5.4 to one ratio. Now with the Revo, the Revo had a, a faster uh, ratio, a quicker reel, but I didn't mind that so so much. Um, the the features, you know, mainly the cost and the other little feet, some of the other features like the line counter, the self engaging um, reel. 
thumb, you know, that that outweighs being able to have a faster uh, faster speed, in my opinion. It's got 25.9 inches of line retrieval per turn of the reel. Now, for you guys that don't understand what that means, for every crank of the reel, we got 25.9 inches of line that it is retrieving. Now, that will uh, that is on average. That can change depending on you know how much line you have on the reel, um, all that. But that uh, that is kind of an average. It is 11.7 ounces. Um, now that's important because if you bump much at all, and there's some folks in here that I know bump a lot, Mike and Jason and uh, some other folks, they you'll understand why being light is so important. Uh, you know, you would think that a half a pound, you know, 11.7 ounces, and then another seven, eight, nine ounces for a rod would not be, would not be much, but you know, all day of, of working that in your arm can make a huge, huge difference. So the lighter, the better, but that's what you got on this one. 11.7 ounces. It has a 22.1 pounds of drag. Let's just call it 22, which is, is pretty good. I mean, if you, if you uh, got to max the drag out on this, odds are 21 pounds here. Uh, by the time you get a bend in a rod, the line and all that, you're going to break a rod. Uh, you'll, you should never really have to max 22 pounds of drag out. Mike Greenwell, Greenwell, buddy, this right here, that right there is the reason you got arms that look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, buddy, is because you're bumping all day with a 7,000. There is no way I could handle that. Laughing chat fishing, buddy. Thanks for joining uh, we, so, uh, if you're just jumping in, I'm going to go over this again, a, a little bit, kind of catch everybody up. So I took a little, uh, siesta from doing the live shows and I really missed it. Had a lot of people reach out, you know, wondering what was going, you know, why I wasn't doing tackle talks no more. And, and it wasn't because I didn't like them. Wasn't because I didn't want to do them. Um, just some life things that come up. Uh, my little girl was doing. Uh, was doing gymnastics and things and had to take a, you know, take a break, put the family first. And thankfully she got moved up in class. Uh, she's doing very well. Kudos to her for that. Give her a round of applause. I know she's not watching, but um, if she is, she would, uh, she would, ex you know, expect me to do that and love that I've done that. But, uh, but now she is doing them on a different night for practice. And it gives me, a night to come out and share some information with you guys like we're doing tonight. So to answer your question, uh, long answer, I guess. Yes. Back at doing tackle talks. Uh, just going to be doing them as I'm able to. Uh, don't know that I'll be able to do them all the time, but we will do them as I'm able to. Uh, Cause I truly, truly love getting on here and helping you guys out. And, and uh, you know, it, it makes a big difference you know, being to help, help you guys out and show you guys good equipment. And I like being able to do this. I'm new to StreamYard. So um, if you guys watch other channels and you like something that they're doing, uh, let me know, shoot me a message on messenger and let me know. Phew. Jason, buddy, no wonder. You ain't got no meat on your bones, little man. If you guys don't know Jason, Jason's about seven foot, 10 inches tall, and about as big as round as a popcorn stick. Super good guy. But to bump with a Alpha Mar line counter 20 is impressive, dude. You are the man. Let's see here. 
and we got some got a pretty good show going on tonight. It was definitely a workout, Jason. I guarantee it, buddy. I guarantee it. So, Mike, you, this is a good uh, this is a good comment, buddy, and uh, I appreciate you commenting on here. So, you know, 6,600, 6,500 rockets, uh, those are all good reels. And and you're going to see a huge uh, change in just how much you can feel, how comfortable you are by switching to a low-profile reel. Um, for me, it was night and day difference on how much longer I could bump throughout the day, how much more comfortable I felt, and honestly, how much – more confidence it gave me. So I think you're going to really see a big difference uh, when you start using a low, low profile. Now, I've seen some questions on here uh, about what rods that I, I use. So for bumping wise, I've used uh, Warrior Cat bumping rods, B&M bumping rods, uh, Big Cat Fever bumping rods. Um. I've used musky rods. Uh, you can get those uh, just about like any academy sports store. Um, a lot of different rods on the market specifically for uh, bumping. They all work good. The biggest thing with picking out a bumping rod is being realistic with yourself on two things, your budget and how good you take care of stuff. If you um, had a gentleman at the show this weekend he he was talking about buying his son a bumping rod and his son is probably 12 13 years old 14 years old maybe young boy but we all know how young boys are most of you know i was a young boy myself and and i was very very tough on stuff very hard on stuff if you want a a bumping rod that is extremely durable uh, that can take a beating and still catch fish b and bumping rods. Uh, they're, you know, they're a good price point. Um, if you're wanting a bumping rod that is extremely sensitive, but you need to take care of, watch how you handle it. You can't really beat it up against stuff. Uh, you got to be careful with it. The Big Cat Fever bumping rod. Um, huge price difference, but you're also going to get that difference in quality. OK, um, but uh, being in bumping rods, catch a lot of fish, but you're, they're not as sensitive. Um, good for a kid, uh, somebody that's hard on things or somebody with a, um, a lower budget that maybe doesn't bump a lot, uh, but wants to get a bumping rod. That's a good one to start with. Yeah, I, I'm super hard on stuff. I have, um, I've actually broke two uh, Warrior Cat bumping rods just because of that, because I'm super, super hard on stuff. So it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter, you know, how old we get. Uh, it's just a matter of how well we take care of stuff. Here's another good good comment, um, and this makes this is a, I'm going to break this down a little bit for people. So, if you ever watch, I'm big into watching bass fishing. Uh, I love to watch Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iaconelli, you know Edwin Evers, all these guys. And if you ever watch, whenever they're flipping uh, jigs, they'll have some of them will have weights on the end of their butts, the butt end. Now, this is not a bumping, a bumping rod, but to give you an idea, so you got your reel, and then they'll have the butt in, and they'll have like a bigger piece here. And what that does is that balances the rod. So as they're working that rod all day long, that helps them uh, so they're not fighting the rod. And that's what uh, Creel's talking about here. And it goes a long way with being comfortable and not fighting the, the combination that you have. And, you know, a lot of this stuff really goes into 
personal preference too. Um, you know, some people and, and and the way that the person is built. Um, Jason here is talking about, you know, the butt length is a comfort factor. And, you know, for somebody that's taller, you know, they may need a butt in that's a little bit longer. Uh, for somebody that's shorter, more a uh, more compact person, they may be able to handle a smaller rod, uh, you know, a smaller uh, combination. You know, so definitely play around with a lot of those things. Um, a good thing to do is to, if you're going to be at the Catfish Conference, go around, shop around, and, and you know, feel these rods, how they feel, you know, compared to the other rod. And then pick whichever one is the most comfortable for you. Because ultimately, whichever one is the most comfortable, that's going to give you the most confidence. And confidence is what catches fish not the not truly the gear the gear helps give you the confidence to catch the fish so uh that's a good a good one good way to go about finding the right rod for you you know for going out and just uh on a limb here tonight this is a pretty good uh pretty good live feed i'm i'm super pumped that we got this many on the night make sure if you like what we're doing if you want to see um you know see more like this Start it back up again. Hit that like button. Go into the comments and let me know. Oh, wrong one there. Let me let me go back up here. Here we go. How does the rod butt length affect sensitivity? So for for me, um, it's not about the scent. That's not going to affect the sensitivity. For me, the sensitivity is going to be coming come from how comfortable I can hold things. The more comfortable I can hold a rod, the more comfortable I can I can be holding that rod and feel things. If I got a big hard grip on on a bumping rod, here let me grab one. All right, so. Here's the here's the Revo we was talking about earlier, okay. And this is a uh, this is an older Warrior Cat bumping rod, super good rod. So its butt end is a little bit longer, okay. Uh, this is a split cork, and it's a exposed reel seat. So as I'm bumping, and I got my finger on that exposed uh, reel seat, and I'm bumping down through there, the more comfortable. I am with holding this, the, the more relaxed my hand will be. And you don't want your hand, I mean, obviously you don't want your hand relaxed, relaxed, because then that's when the fish hit and it's going to yank it out of your, out of your uh, hands. But the more comfortable I am in motion and in sync, the more apt I am to be able to feel every little thing that, that I'm doing that's under the water, whether it be a log, a rock, a bite, sand, mud, uh, whatever that might be. So hopefully, hopefully that helps you understand. Uh, let me know. Let me know if it uh, if it did uh, if it did. Whew. Tell I haven't done this for a while. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, laughing, uh, laughing cat fishing. If you're just getting started into this, definitely. Uh, definitely check out Show Me Cat Fishing, some of the stuff that they do that Ryan does on his live feeds. I've got a few videos um, back in my history where I'm out doing some bumping. I've done a whole tutorial for Mississippi River Monsters specifically on bumping this past year in Memphis. Uh, explain a lot of it, show kind of where we're, you know, where and how we're fishing, how we set up. Uh, take a look at those, and if you're, let me know if you're going to be down at the Catfish Conference. If you are, uh, you know, hit me up. Um, I don't mind. We'll walk around a little bit, and I can show you different uh, different things, give you my thoughts on them, and then, you know, that might be able to help you make a, a good decision on what, what you want to buy. Who's your catfish excursions? Thanks for joining in, buddy. Whiskers and stripes. Uh, awesome, awesome. You'll be there. Has life in here? 
bumping that. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. That's too much like work. You got that right. You got that right, buddy. Has life. I mean, I'm telling you what that it is work. It is work. But I'm telling you, the first time one of those fish yank it out of your one of yank that rod out of your hand, it's uh it is hard, hard to put it down. And uh you'd be amazed. Be amazed how easy it is to get hooked on something like that. Hooks and hammocks, thanks for joining in tonight. Matt Jones, thanks for coming in. Eddie, thanks for thanks for jumping in. So you're right. I mean, it is uh, low profile reels in general are a little bit pricey the this is an abu garcia revo toro s okay for instance this reel uh what they are now i'm not for sure but when i bought it was about 300 320 350 uh great reel uh for what it was um absolutely love the reel still bump with it today uh, these reels are roughly half the price of those. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons that I, I started using this and, and tried it. Uh, then, when, you know, once I started trying it, really, really liked it and just kept on using it. And we'll, we'll continue to use it, uh, you know, from this point out, honestly. All right, here we go. Now, this is some good confrontational stuff. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. So uh, let's talk about let's talk about this for a second. Um, and I'd like to hear I'd like to see some feedback in the chat as well about this. So I've got my personal preferences. Um, we're going to talk about out on the Mississippi River or even a higher river. Uh, for that matter, and we'll talk about a couple different scenarios um, while bumping. So, first one is Mississippi River. Got plenty of current. Um, don't worry, you know, we, we don't have to worry about current in this situation. Uh, fish are strapped on the bottom. Uh, they are glued to the bottom. Um, in this scenario, I will not use a demon dragon. Will not use a float, period. Um, you know, I want my bait closer to the bottom. I'm going to shorten my le uh, length of my uh, sinker leader and maybe even shorten up my leader, my bumping leader as well. Um, that's for Mississippi River, fish are, on, you know, flat on the bottom type deal. Now, let's change the scenario a little bit. We're still in the Mississippi River. Uh, fish are more active. Um they're kind of up off the bottom a little bit and very aggressive. In this scenario, I will lengthen my leader, uh, both my bumping and my sinker leader a little bit, and I will use a float or a demon dragon, either one. Um, so those two scenarios. Now, another scenario that I like to use a demon dragon with bumping on the Mississippi River is if I am bumping into a lot of wood or cover. Okay, and that's in that situation then I will uh, definitely try demon dragons or floats in general. And usually whoever one person in the boat will be using some sort of float and the other person will not be. Um, some days it's, you know, it is very, very clear whether they like it or they don't like it. So the next scenario I want to talk about is in areas that you don't have a lot of current, but you still want to bump. So I hear a lot of people talk about this. They, they say we don't have the current to bump like those guys on the Mississippi River. And you got to learn how to play, play that current. Uh, for instance, if uh, – let's see here. I'll jump back. I want to 
highlight this question. Um, so if, for instance, we're on the higher river, we don't have a lot of current, maybe just a mile and a half an hour. Okay. But we still want to bump. Those fish are, are really um, eating the baits whenever we're presenting them in a bumping manner. Then I will use a float or a demon dragon. I will also use a bigger piece of bait. And that will allow for more drag against that, pulling that bait back more uh, every time you pick it up. More so if you didn't have a, a you know, float or a demon dragon or a smaller piece of bait, then it's not got as much drag on it and hence not allowing it to pick up and pull that bait back like it should. Okay. So two different scenarios or several different scenarios and several different ways to answer that question. But thanks for answering or asking Roger. So uh, for those that are just joining, thank you guys for joining. Um, awesome to have you guys in here tonight was not planned just uh honestly was trying to get it together and see if it was going to work or not but we're talking about the akuma convector it is the cv 354 d and you can pick these up at tackle bandit uh check the banner down below for anything catfish um anything slunger cat uh, any apparel for Slunger Cat, any apparel for Catfish, go to catfishclothing.com and use uh, Slunger Cat 20. And then also anything from Tackle Bandit, use Slunger Cat for discounts. All right. What's going on, Zach? Stonefly, thanks for joining in. So length for weight line, um, a lot of this is going to be, and, and you have, and you have two questions here. So I'm going to pull that one up as well. So I have plenty of current, just a shallow river. So this is a good technique. Uh, if, if you have shallow rivers, uh, because you're presenting the baits to the fish before the boat gets there, um, kind of in a natural presentation. Okay. So think of it like that. And you, the length of your sinker line will vary, okay, um, depending on kind of just what the fish tell you. I normally start off with about, about a foot or so and then go to two foot, um, you know, in, in between there. And you will find that if the closer they are to the bottom, the muddier they are, the shorter the that sinker, the, the closer you need to be to the bottom and the more active, the longer you can get away with. If you guys are just joining, if you wouldn't mind, make sure you hit that thumbs up for me. Uh, we are, we are on StreamYard and I'm testing it out tonight. Hopefully everything goes well. You guys know how I do with electronics. I want to thank everybody for joining. Uh, if you guys are um, are watching this show, uh, make sure you go over to Muskrat Adventures. I'll be on there at 8. We'll be talking about some new, uh, not really new stuff, but uh, beginner uh, fishing stuff. And, and I know to a lot of people that doesn't sound too exciting, but... Uh, we're going to start with that and then we're going to go into whatever questions we get asked. So if I don't get to one of the questions here,
All right, we are back if you guys are still with me. Uh, hopefully, you guys are still with me. Hello, hello. Sorry about that. Hey, it would not be a live feed uh, without something going wrong, would it? I mean, if I if I done a live feed and did not have something electronically go wrong, it just wouldn't be right. Would not be right. So, yeah, we got to talk about some reels tonight. Talking about some bumping. Uh, I am going to do this. Uh, try to do this from moving forward, and I want to try to bring on some people. Um, there's a lot of a lot of really big names in the industry that I think can share a lot of information. So uh, as we're going through here, drop some names down that you guys would like to see in the comments. Uh, I don't really want to bring a bunch of uh, people on every week, but every so often and, and get their opinion on gear as well. Jason, this is absolutely 100% true, buddy. And uh, awesome that you, that you said that and reminded me about this. If you were just starting out, uh, you know, do not go straight to the nastiest stuff. You, you know, For a lot of you guys, you guys probably hear me. If you're not fishing in something nasty, you're not fishing in the right spots. Well, kind of forget that if you are, if you're bumping or you're just learning to bump. Uh, bumping can be very frustrating, can be very time consuming to learn and go somewhere on the sand side of the river and learn your boat control first. Um, learn your boat control and your bumping and get those together, okay? Because that is the most important thing. Being able to put that boat, uh, the speed, the direction, and the location that you want as you're going down the river is, the, is one of the most important parts of bumping. So Jason, thank you for bringing that up, buddy. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, and I would highly recommend that you do that. Go to the sand side and then work your way over. You know, find some current that you're comfortable with, two, two and a half, three miles an hour, and just, just start from there, okay? And then once you get confident, then start moving over. Start moving over into that uh, more heavier cover and, and uh, some deeper water, some faster water, things like that, until you really get the hang of it. Yes. So, um, question was, do I like a bumping rod that has a blank exposed and exposed, uh, real seat? What he's talking about is, um, let's see if I can get it in here. You guys can see that little section right there. This is your real seat. And then you have that, which is exposed. And that allows, that allows me to put my finger on it and really feel uh, more things as I'm going down through there. This, uh, this, I, I love this comment. I taught my wife to bump in one trip. Uh, that's, that's awesome. This weekend at the Columbus Fishing Expo, I seen a lot of, lady anglers that are just getting into the sport and it is it is so awesome to see more and more uh, lady anglers and young anglers getting into the sport it, it really truly is awesome let's see here there's another good comment so I pilots, um, let's talk about the, you know, we got, you got Minn Kota, you've got the ghost, um, you've got many different trolling motors, um, motor guide that are on the market that have true, you know, ways to, to make it easier for you to work your bait down a certain section of the water. Okay. Um, use those resources 
to uh, you know with, within your technology that you have. And if you don't, it's not you. Way before uh, trailers ever around. So you don't feel like you have one to it. Uh, get out there and try it um, with whatever you have. So, Jesse, I use, um, and I would say 90% of people use braided fishing line. Um, now, I'm a 65 pound guy. I like 65 pound uh, spider wire or uh, Power Pro. Um, this is, and this is why I like doing this out here in the garage. I really like doing it out here because I can, I get a question, I can just reach over here and grab the stuff. But this is the braid that I prefer. It's uh, just Power Power Pro. It's like the green collar. See if you guys can see that. If I can get in focus. But 65 pound test. There's the details on the back. And this is a 150 yard uh, spool. Um, I can usually get, you know, one reel, uh, possibly two reels, you know, depending on how full I want them out of this. Let's see. Try to answer some questions. Um, How's the boat doing now that you got almost a year on it? So this boat, yeah, this boat right here, uh, this is a Sea Arc Protégé, Prodigy, however you want to uh, pronounce it. And it's a 20-foot boat. Um, the only difference between it and a Pro Cat is it does not have the rod lockers. And I absolutely love it. Um, I've, I had the Pro Cat 200. Uh, the, the original ProCat 200 that I had was gray. Um, it was a 2011 model, had the windshields that were back. So it was before they moved the windshields forward. And then my second ProCat was with the windshields forward. Um, then I had the Dynasty, and then I had this. The Dynasty, I loved it. It was a great boat. Uh, as much as I travel, it was tough getting in and out of hotels, in and out of restaurants. Um, super comfortable gr boat, great on the water, but this boat right here is absolutely my favorite boat that I've owned so far. Um, why is that? It's just got an, it's, it's basic. It is me. It is, if you know, I've got a, a nice truck, but it is a work truck style package and it's, this is a work truck style package in the boat. And it just, uh, it fits me. It's easy to get in and out of hotels, easy to get in and out of restaurant parking lots. Um, it fits my garage easy. And, you know, it for me, loading and unloading by myself um, is, is super important because I do guide trips. You know, I'm filled by myself. So getting this thing in and out of the water makes it super easy. So I truly, I truly love this 20, uh, uh, 20 foot protege. And, uh, I think uh, hopefully they have some down at the catfish conference for you guys to look at. Zaylin, uh, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Completely understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we must have different work trucks. Well, well, I guess what I meant by that is uh, it's just a work truck package, you know, just, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I get what you're saying.
What a good crowd on here tonight. I tell you what, folks, uh, we've been on here for almost an hour. I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, hopefully, you guys have learned something. Uh, you know, I, I can't express to you guys how much I love each and every one of you guys, all the support that you guys give us. Um, as always, something I used to do, and I really miss that I was haven't been able to do it a lot. If you need somebody to pray for you, please let me know in the comments. Call me, message me. If you need to talk to somebody, if you need to hear the word of God, if you need, you know, if you need to get something off your chest, get a hold of me. I would love to help you out. I'd love to, uh, uh, you know, hear your your problems and your stresses and help in any way I possibly could. So with that, come on over, um, join Muskrat and uh, I on his channel, and we will uh, share some more fishing information in the next hour or so. I'm going to give me something to drink, catch up with him, and we will catch you guys next week here on Tackle Talk. Thanks for joining. God bless. Tight lines. See ya.